During the winter of 1910 and 11, heavy snowfall blanketed the eastern side of the Sierra Nevada. Residents in the Lundy Canyon lived with a threat of avalanche, but their worst fears were realized beginning at 10 p.m. on the night of March 7, 1911, when the whole mountainside of snow sliced through Lundy on the upper side of the lake. Buildings were scattered like toys. A total of eight were killed, three from the Jordan power plant, which cascaded down the mountain with a torrent of snow. On this episode of History Hunters, we'll review the tragic act of nature and visit the graveyard where eight victims are buried. Out here off of Highway 395 in Mono County is a monument to the avalanche victims of 1911. I'm gonna take a look at it and visit the gravesite. It says not far from this site, in the early morning hours of March 7, 1911, a massive avalanche roared down the east slope of Copper Mountain and wiped out the town of Jordan. Eight people were killed, including Robert Mason, the chief engineer of the power plant. Only his wife and dog survived. This snow slide was the worst of several occurring in and around Mono County during the winter of 1910-11. Rescuers coming from Bodie and Levining were forced to travel by snowshoes and skis as all roads were impassable. This monument here was dedicated by E. Clampus Vitus, Bodie Chapter 64, it looks like. So the avalanche occurred right up there on the way to Jordan and Lundy Canyon. There's a Lundy Lake up there. This event was also the death knell for a town slowly recovering from a financial disaster, which was the closing of the local mines, businesses, and post office in 1903. Today, remnants of foundations, miscellaneous debris, and headstones stand as silent reminders of one of the most devastating events here in Mono County. We are visiting in August 2020, it's hard to imagine this desert escape with all the sagebrush and was all covered in snow. Far off over there is where the Lundy Avalanche Cemetery is. It's said that bodies and buildings, pieces of the power plant were washed down this area. As is the case, there are pieces of metal and tin cans like this scattered throughout Mono County. If you go to Aurora, that's all over the place, as well as Bodie. Three, possibly four avalanches unleashed destruction that horrible night in the area. Residents had experienced avalanches before, but not to this extent. The first slide at 10 p.m. cut through the upper part of the town of Lundy, a town which formed after gold was discovered at the May Lundy mine in 1879. About two hours later, the second deluge hit the center of town and a third one carried away buildings at the lower end of Lundy. The jail at Lundy was bowled over, as was A.L. Taylor's butcher's shop in the center of town and a slaughterhouse at the lower end of town. The old Becker home was also destroyed. The Crystal Lake Mining Company powerhouse was also destroyed. The last avalanche, possibly the third or fourth, fell from Copper Mountain and pushed the Jordan power plant down toward Muddle Lake, carrying with it splintered timbers like toothpicks and twisted wires like they were threads. Remnants of the destruction can still be seen today scattered along the hillsides. 10 were initially reported missing, but the death toll later dropped to eight confirmed. One of the newspapers in Bodie, I think it was, talked about the power that destroyed the towns of Jordan and Lundy with a satanic vengeance. You can imagine that it really tra traumatized the entire area. Now, the hydroelectric plant at Jordan was wiped out, which affected power to not only Aurora, but to also to Levining and also to Hawthorne, not too far away, and a bunch of different mining camps. All of the victims were brought to that hill right behind me to be buried in their own cemetery by themselves. So we're gonna go up there and check it out and see if we can find out some of the names of the people who died in that avalanche. The first grave is that of avalanche victim Harry Madison Weir. Looks like he was a private in the U.S. Cavalry. He was almost 24. His original marker is right here. 
Harry, I understand, was a native of Pasadena. Marked grave, but doesn't say who it is. Unmarked grave. It's probably a grave right here. The grave that's is marked, just doesn't have a name. Right here is the grave of Del Orma Knowlton, who was a 29-year-old electrician from Brooklyn, New York. He'd been in charge of the plant and was on watch that night, Tuesday, March 6, when the avalanche occurred. His body was found in the ruins of the powerhouse, seated against the generator. Right here is the grave of power plant engineer Robert H. Mason. He was 42 when he died. His wife survived after spending 60 hours and tombed in ice before she was rescued, and it's said that she only survived because she huddled with her dog to keep her from freezing to death. Robert was not so lucky. There are broken bits of glass here in that concrete footing. Down here is the grave of Patrick Stromblad, one of the four miners killed in the avalanche. He actually has two headstones, but it looks like the top portion is missing from the white marker. Patrick was born in Sweden in 1869 and came to the United States in 1886 from Liverpool, England, aboard the cruise ship Cephalonia. Tiny little graveyard killed in the avalanche over in that direction. Here lies Roland Hardened. We couldn't find any information on him, but he may have been one of the four miners occupying a cabin a short distance from the power plant. Here lies John Laveau, and from the sound of it, he was a French immigrant trying to find his luck here in the Mono County mines. Ben Pesson's grave, he was a miner in this area who also died in the avalanche. If you're wondering about the odd-shaped grave markers, they are fashioned of marble stone reclaimed from the wrecked powerhouse switchboard. When the slide struck the powerhouse plant, it broke this board into pieces, and they cut eight pieces of it for the headstones. This is going to conclude this episode of History Hunters. We enjoyed our visits in Mono County. I hope you learned a little bit about the history in this area. We ask that you give us a comment, a like, and also if you could subscribe to this channel if you haven't, we would certainly appreciate it. Thank you so much. Thank you.